Kyle Wright won 21 games, but I still can't stand to watch him pitch. Is he for real? It's Bravescast. We're going to talk about that today. Bravescast. Woo. It's going to end up being the intro. Just Bravescast. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I was I was gonna just get my keyboard out and just do like a three note like do 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 and just like the logo and then yeah, um, cool today on Bravescast we're gonna talk about Kyle Wright. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, Kyle Wright. Um, really, for those of you who like follow the Braves religiously, like we do, uh, Kyle Wright was a bit of an enig- uh, was a bit of enigma an enigma. Kyle Wright was a bit of an enigma last season. Not last season, for his entire career. Um, We always knew that he had the ability to become a productive major leaguer, but uh, he he sucked. He was really bad uh, for... Really bad. A lot of seasons. We would bring him up. He would would come up. He would take a giant deuce on the mound, and then we'd send him back to uh, Gwinnett. Uh, if you then, look at his uh, Fangraphs page, it's all negative. So, it's it's pretty bad. It's um, four, even, four, four seasons of negative wars. But but then but then we did something uh, that many would call crazy, but you know he just had to be there. Uh, we pitched him. We started him in the World Series, and ever since he's been, dare I say it, uh, a solid major leaguer. Uh, so, Mitch, obviously, you had the bull take earlier that you don't like watching him pitch. I'll give you the floor to explain yourself. So, I think I mentioned this on a previous episode. In Strider, general, Strider episode. Strider episode. I don't actually like to watch the Braves when they're pitching because it makes me nervous. Uh, I always have the mindset that batters can win you games, but pitchers can only give away the and for Kyle Wright, especially you know, for 2018, 19, 20, and that small little stint he had in the regular season, World Series, I actually didn't even watch Game 5 until. But. That was the right uh, Or Game 4. But for those four seasons, you know, especially in 2020, Kyle Wright was given an extended trial. And I just couldn't watch him pitch. And, you know, this year, he came in. He started the year in the rotation. He, rotation. He's quite good. He's a very good pitcher. But in the back of my head, going in is the Kyle Wright from 2018 to 2020. And uh, my just general anxiousness watching pitch. Um. So when, like, we look at the stats, Kyle Wright is pretty good. Uh. He won 21 games. We're not huge fans of wins. Well, I uh, actually have a take on pitchers' wins. You do? Um, yes, I do. So, yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't mean diddly squat individually. We know this. That's that's been established. That's nothing new. Um, but I do think it shows how effective a team is um, at just if. How should I say it? For me, if if a pitcher gets now like sixteen or above wins, which like honestly back in the day, just like any Joe Schmo could get sixteen wins um, or above, it shows that the team is able to mount a lead. You know, they're able to score early and they're able to keep their lead. Uh, so I I think it still shows a strong team effort. I think if a pitcher gets twenty wins. You know, individually, it doesn't really mean that much. But to me, it says a lot more about the team than it does the pitcher. Um, and, you know, he it means they get a lot of run support. It means that their bullpen is able to seal the deal. Um, you know, maybe it makes for a less dramatic viewing experience. Uh, so, you know, as a casual fan, it's just kind of a, you know, those five to three games, you know, that don't really have much drama. But as a fan who you know just wants to see your team, uh, do everything the right way and just you know play a solid game of ball. I think it's a good indicator uh, for for that. I think with pitchers wins. I mean, I don't pay attention. To pitchers wins. I just. Kyle Wright had it. 
Uh, in general, though, a bad pitcher cannot win. Yeah, a good, exactly. A good pitcher can lose 20 games. We saw that. I don't know what's Shelby Miller. Um, he had like a 4 and 8. Great pitcher. Win. Uh, with uh, Kyle Wright, you know, bad pitchers generally, I don't know, but bad pitchers don't win. Just, they don't. I don't know who had the highest ERA uh, 20 game winner, but you're not going to see a guy with a 5 ERA. Yeah. But it's not going to happen. Uh, so 21 games doesn't mean Kyle Wright. I know some in the Braves community thought he was forward. He wasn't no. the third best pitcher on the Braves, but he is a very good third best pitcher, like uh, in the league. I said this about Charlie Morton and being a four starter, but same thing with Kyle Wright. Uh, most teams would take him as a starter. Uh, most teams would probably take him as their second starter. I don't know if you can find, you know, except for bottom. Pirate. Yeah, like a contending team. He's not going to be a number yeah. one, but like on a contending team, he's a solid. Uh, he had a 2.9 F4. He had a 3.19. He's, the improvements that he made between 2020, I guess we didn't see him. Really. Between 2020, where, you know, the Dodgers let him up. Just not him. To last year. Like, I think I'm getting to the point where I can sort of watch him pitch. That's how good his pitch is. Uh, I don't know. Kind of the same thing. If you look at projections, you get a bad pitcher. I think it's the same thing with going on. Spencer. Okay. Strider's projections. Go. This seems far too low. Looking at Kyle Wright, I think he's a... I think he's this... Zips, for instance, has him as a 1.8. I think he's much better. I, and this is where, you know, you get into the follies of projections. I don't think we should, he's a different guy than what he was in 2018, 20, not in 2018, but 2019, you know, 2020. We can't rely on those numbers because that's just not who he is anymore. Um, I believe, I mean, you know, when you look at his like underlying numbers, I think it's like fairly sustainable. I mean, obviously he's not a huge strikeout guy. Um, it's not that he's not. I mean, he will. You know, he's his strikeouts per nine is just under nine. Um, but I think he figured something out uh, with you know his pitch mix with his control, um, and I think he's going to be, you know, pretty much in this range for the rest of his career. I don't think he's going to get much better. Um, I know with Spencer Strider, we had that argument of, you know, like, can he get better? Can he, like, reach the next level? Um, and the reason why we were like, it's going to be pretty difficult is because he's already at such a high level from the sample size we've seen. Kyle Wright, it's just, like, his stuff isn't going to blow by you. It's not going to, like, blow you away or anything. But he does everything well. Everything in his repertoire suits him well. And I, I fully, I know I've, I, I keep seeming super optimistic about every pitcher. Um, that's because I am, but I think he's going to pretty much maintain what we've seen, what we've seen from him last year. Yeah. I think one thing that I think we need to remember, Kyle Wright isn't a young pitcher. He was a college pitcher, pitched for Vanderbilt. He was drafted at first round. Yeah. Fifth overall. And then he made the major league here. So, whereas with Strider, with Anderson, Elder, like those guys are still on the younger end. Elder, I think Elder was born in 2000. Yeah. He's really young. He's really young. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kyle Wright's 27. Like he, he took a lot longer than I think the Braves thought he would to hit next year. But this was, I think, you know, at 27, I don't know how much better he's going to get. But he made such a massive impact. You know, as a number three star. 
three war pitcher guy who gets the strikeout when the uh, the home every uh, the, he's a good the whole, solid pitcher. The whole, the whole, the whole. You know, but at the I don't know at the same time it's, I I obviously said it earlier not the best Kyle Wright expert pitch. But he's a good pitcher. I, I don't know if there's much it, else to like it, really dive into. Yeah, uh, another th- uh, something I want to bring up, and there's going to be a game after this, uh, if you're okay in participating. Yeah. I know yeah. I, I didn't agree. I didn't ask you before this episode if you were okay with it. But um, another point I want to mention was his performance in the 2022 uh, playoffs, where if I can – find it here uh he pitched one game against the, i was at this game uh not to brag or anything uh but i will it, you know uh an offense i would say the phillies offense at this point was fire, firing on all cylinders i mean pretty much that series they scored i think at least five or six runs a game except for uh game two in which kyle wright pitched uh six innings zero runs allowed two hits um one walk. I mean, it, it's, I, I, you know, it, it's just in evaluating players nowadays, you know, you don't want to like use one performance as like a key indicator, but I think it really showed what type of pitcher he is now where he can come up in the big moments. He can come up um, in those spots. He's not just like a flash in the pan. Uh, and to me, you know, if anybody was doubting the ability of Kyle Wright, before that day, uh, I think all of their doubts got quelled after that that performance because you saw that you know he was the only pitcher on the Braves that was able to uh, quiet down that offense. Uh, one of the only and pitchers. Obviously, What's up? He might have been the only pitcher. He might have been the only pitcher who wasn't sick. Um, yeah, but, fair, fair. But he's still hey hey he's still but he still like shut down innings. the Phillies. He was a yeah, very good. Yeah. He, uh, I think in the World Series going you know way back to. One, I was terrified to have a pitch game. I didn't think uh, we saw Kyle Wright for I think, mm-hmm. and then for the rest of that time he was just in green. Right? And I at the time I thought you know that's a that's an indication of giving up on him. starter. They they passed him for guys. Still love to keep. To hope, the in the major leagues. Hope he does well in the. Uh, so he kept. Uh, he kept getting passed over. So in my head, you know, they were giving up on him. Really, they were just trying to get him consistent. And when he pitched the series, he came in with the bases loaded. I think he only allowed. Was it a homer to Altuve? Is that it? I just had his post. I just had his postseason. Uh, pitching. I'm seeing. I'm seeing one earned run. I think it was that home run to Altuve. I gotta look into the. Uh, uh, that just phenomenal. Like came in with the bases loaded, got a ground out. The Astros. Out. Of that. One mistake to Altuve. That's a completely different pitcher that we saw. Uh, and then 2022. Um. You know he was just a really solid pitcher. He he outperformed his hip. Uh, that means. You think you guys did not perform it by much. It wasn't he didn't have a two five year once you get within less than half I... that's kind of uh so Cole you had a game. Know what this game is. Alright. Um and I might do this later, uh in the next episode too. So uh I like me some parallels. I like uh, some throwbacks and you know, I don't know if anybody who's listening to this podcast knows but the Braves had a trio of pitchers back in the 90s and early 2000s who were you know they're all they're all right they're good I don't know um, you know like three Hall of Famers whatever um, one of the best pitchers of the time yeah you know won a World Series probably should have won more should have uh, won but, more you know them's the breaks so to me, Kyle Wright, it, it was going to be Mike Soroka, uh, but unfortunately, go back to the fifth starter episode. Oh, 
didn't really pan out that way. But to me, Kyle Wright is Greg Maddox light, uh, just in terms of his stuff. So I was looking at Greg Maddox's uh, baseball reference, as one does, and comparing it to Kyle Wright's. And so I looked at Greg Maddox's first breakout season. So just so you know, for reference, Greg Maddox's first full season in 1987 with the Cubs, uh, he had a 5.61 ERA. He wasn't good. He was pretty bad, actually. Uh, the year before that, he only started five games, but he had a 5.52 ERA. Also, not good. Uh, and then he has a breakout year in 1988. So I'm going to do a little game with you. It's going to be five questions. Uh, I'm going to okay. name a stat, and you have to tell me if it's Greg Maddox 1988 or Kyle Wright 2022. So just just, just going to do five. Baseball fan. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Make sure you have Kyle Wright's baseball. Make sure his stats are away. I don't want you cheating on me here. <laughs> okay. All right. Flip it over. Yeah, flip it over. I didn't realize you. I didn't realize you printed them out. That's awesome. That's that's sick. All right. Uh, one point one five nine whip. Was that Kyle Wright or Greg Maddox? One point one. One point one or one point five. One point one five nine. I go Maddox. Kyle Wright. Maddox really? had a one point two four nine. So Kyle wow. Wright's whip was better. His first now, granted, granted, Greg Max was twenty two, Kyle Wright's twenty six, so there is a quite an age gap there. Anybody who's been both twenty two and twenty six know you're a different person then. Um still interesting thing about. All right. Uh Homer per nine point five. That's Maddox, yeah. He yeah, he it was insane how how good he was at not allowing homers. Like it's actually I do we might need to touch on this before we end. I do know a little bit about Kyle Wright's hard ish. You can call them that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just, there's no way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His wasn't much <laughs> worse. His was 0.90. I mean, you know, but still. Um, all right. Mm-hmm. Covered whip. All right. ERA plus 114. That was Maddox. Wright was 127. Didn't know 319 ERA is better than that. All right. You're one for three. It's not bad. You know, if you're... Not great. Bad, if I was a, you, you a would contact be, hitter, I'd be okay. Yeah. You'd be qualifying for the batting title if this was 2021. That's my on-base percentage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better than Javier Baez, but worse than the average major leaguer. Um, yeah. All right, let's do. Then we covered wins. Let's do strikeout per nine. Uh, eight point seven. Right. Yeah, you got that one. That would, that was a gimme. Uh, for reference, Maddox was five point one. You. This is for any pitcher. Uh. But sometimes I go back on baseball reference shocked to see guys like Lavin have like full seasons with four and a half strikeouts. Yeah. And it really that's, reminds me how different baseball is now. Yeah. But, yeah. That, that's why I understand FIP is like a... If you aggregate it, yeah, it is an indicator for future performance. But like, I do think there are exceptions to it. Um, And obviously like I mean, Greg Maddox, it balances out since obviously, like, he just didn't allow home runs whatsoever. Yeah. But. But yeah, the strikeouts. If you go back, uh, look at starters from Maddox's era, uh, you know, nine strikeouts per nine would be putting you. Starting. So. For the last one, I'm just going to ask straight up, which I probably should have done from this the onset, but it's okay. Uh, who had the better hits per nine, Maddox or Wright? Better hits per nine. So less amount of hits per, yeah, per I'm nine. I'm going to go right because he walked. Yep. Actually, 
he walked slightly less than Maddox really? did in 1988, but uh, and he also had the better hits per nine. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Again, uh, bad I, rationale, but I got the answer right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were three for five. That's really good. Um, yeah. I again, Maddox was 22. I'm not saying Kyle Ray is Greg Maddox. He's not. He's not going to be Greg Maddox. Um, he's definitely Greg Maddox. Super suit. He's like. Uh, I don't know if you remember like the app store, like in 2008 where it's like, you could get like the light version of a game and it just had like no features whatsoever. Like that's basically Kyle. You were throwing me back. I forgot that existed. (laughs) You're like pocket God light, you know, it's like, but if you got the full version, you can just like do anything you wanted to, but like the light. Or 99 cents, but you're like really religiously firm on not paying. Yeah. You're so frugal. You're just like, nah, that's not a smart financial decision. I'm also 12 99 years old. 99 cents for pocket god? No way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. But, um, yeah, we're nearing the end here. I mean, if, if you want to make the point on Kyle Wright's uh, hard hit rate, that can be, like, the last point yeah. we make. And so, then... obviously, we've talked a lot about how good we think Kyle Wright is. I'm going to stand by that. Um, but if, you, if you're a baseball savant fan like uh, I am and Nicole is, you would be probably surprised to see how many are on Kyle Wright's Baseball Savant page. If you guys don't know what Baseball Savant is, check it out. But if you look at players, they know. have percentiles. They should know. But some, some people might not. Um, not to, not to like, the be an elitist about it, but, like, get on that, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, blues, for those people who don't know, means that they're below the 50th percentile. Um, and Kyle Wright was below... The 50th percentile in XERA, uh, so expected ERA, expected batting, expected slugging. And he was also very much in the blue with uh, average exit velocity at 35th percentile, and hard hit rate in the 23rd percentile. I think for it's almost paradoxical because I have a hard time watching the rate still. Um, but I look at those numbers and I'm not really all that. Like, you don't want to lose, obviously, but, you know, he had great fastball velo, spin, curveball spin, extension. I know he went through a little rough patch in August. Those stats might be hurting tiles. Rest of him, that performance, which did hits. I think it might be a foolish take on my end back at the end of the season I'm just not all that worried about blue uh, I'm doing some emergency um think. yeah on Savant because the thing about that too um and again a lot of times I think we tend to look at some of these stats like with tunnel vision uh we tend to look mm-hmm. at them in a vacuum we were saying that earlier about Spencer Strider's Slider, where, you know, if you look at it by by itself, it's not that great of a pitch. But if you look at it in conjunction with this fastball, it does the job. It gets the job done. Um, what I'm looking for with Kyle Wright is, you know, yeah, his, like, exit velocities were bad. But look at the average launch angle. I mean, he's basically, like, making hitters pound into the ground. And... I'm trying to get this like yeah i mean his top percentage was 40 percent um I'm trying to see his actual like ground ball yeah 55 percent so they're hitting it hard i mean the defense is having to work hard but you know considering the fact that you have you know ozzy Albies at second Question. austin austin rally at <laughs> third base We'll see. Not actually, it's, it's not a bad first base. It's thing. actually uh, it's actually interesting to look at though, because that might be, um, you know, where we see sort of the you know intricate roster construction. You know, this Rube Goldberg machine that you know you construct uh, for a roster. You know, start to fall apart. Maybe you know Kyle Wright. I mean, he had Dansby Swanson playing behind him. You don't have that anymore. Even if Von in case Grissom, you guys didn't know, Swanson was. In the hundredth percentile. Yeah. So maybe, you know, even that, like that, those exit velocities that Kyle Wright has given up, those increased exit velocities, um, you know, might be a problem next year. Cause
because his the infield defense behind him might be slightly worse. Uh, so that'll be something to keep an eye on, and that's something we'll definitely be keeping an eye on as the season progresses. You know, if, if at the end Ka- of the day, he doesn't allow as many barrels. He's a barrel. He doesn't that many batters. I think he was in fifty percentile in walks, kind of in that area and strikeouts, and like full pointed. You know, he's a ground ball. That might hurt him. We don't know who's playing shortstop in the the position behind catcher. Center field. Um, but, you know, still have an elite defensive second baseman. Really good defensive first baseman. Austin Riley will get got, to the Austin Riley episode. He's, he's got no range, but like, if you hit it right to him, he'll he'll make the play. Like even if it's hit like a hundred points miles per hour, uh, he'll make it. We'll get to it. But, uh, I think Austin Riley has a weird thing where he actually makes plays he shouldn't. Make. <laughs> he shouldn't. Make. It's a really weird uh, thing. But yeah, overall, you know, like Cole was saying, you look at one thing that I've had to stop looking at is max exit below. If you look yeah. at Kyle's right max exit below, he gave up one of the hardest hit balls in the league. But you know, those are outliers. Kind of might he might give up hard ground balls, but hard ground balls are at best doubles. At maybe you'll get a weird double. Usually they're singles. They are never homers. That's the important thing. Limiting homers and they End of the day, Kyle Wright, he's a great pitcher, great number one pitcher to have. Big breakout. Um, no, I mean, I pretty much agree. You know, we'll keep an eye on how the, you know, shift in the infield defense, you know, affects his, uh, pretty much his output stats, uh, more or less. And, um, you know, like I said, I think he's just going to be, I think last year pretty much gave us a baseline for what we should expect for the next, uh, you know, three to four years. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Like, subscribe, um, you know, share with your friends. You know, there's not many great Braves podcasts out there, kind of why we started this whole thing. So if you have a friend who's like, hey, I love the Braves, but there's a lack of people who are talking about the Braves, maybe some send them and if way. you don't think that kyle wright is the next greg maddox at no more fielders on twitter and all of that i i would agree with you <laughs> i'll be like yeah <laughs> i said that too <laughs> yell at him and tell him that he was wrong yeah that that's that's twitter in a nutshell anyway uh bye